Hi, welcome to The Sacred Journey. The Sacred Journey is the program that reminds you that life is a wonderful adventure and each and every experience we have is a unique and perfect opportunity for learning. I'm Joy St. Germain and I'm so excited to share part two of Martin Espino and, um, well, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let Martin speak for himself in his own special way. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm always mesmerized by um, all the things that you do. Our first show, we talked a lot about your background, your history, a lot about the instruments and the historical aspects, and I'm going to give you free reign to do whatever you'd like to do in this show. Okay. Well, real quick, I, mean, I can't show you all the percussion things, but um, let's review real quick. When we have the hunting bowl, it's the only string instrument, and it could be eight, nine feet long, or it could be a mouth bowl right there. Then you have the, some 500 languages in the Americas. In Mexico, there were some 250. Now there's about 54 or something, and they're still existing, those ones. But we're not all, uh, if you look at Native American, I gotta clear one thing up off the side, away from instruments. People always go, what tribe are you? And I like to be silly and blow their mind and go, I'm not with a tribe. They go, wait a minute. How could you be needed without being a tribe? Well, we come from a nation. There's a lot of us. So on both sides of my identity, the Tepehuanos and the Yaquis, we're, we're, we're a nation, we're not a tribe. I so understand. let me get to the instrument. So voice, right? Uh, string. And then there's this wacky variety in high um, culture or metropolis areas. And that's where they had more time to develop things. Mexico and Peru were the ones that did, or Bolivia, were the ones that did a lot of things. In ancient Mexico, there's five different kinds of instruments. There's whistles of all varieties. I cannot even begin to go there. Um, I'm talking about construction, sound, uh, sign of wacky stuff. Pan pipes, we had those. The only examples we have are ones made of clay. They look like shark fins. And then flutes, which are cylindrical. And then flutes that are spherical, that are round, and then there's trumpets. So let me play some of these. A cylindrical flute. Yeah, I'm just letting people know that we're Skyping you in from California. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. I just wanted people to know that we're Skyping you in all the way across the country from California. So if there's a little mm, about the quality of the recording, that's why, of the video. But yeah, thank you. Hopefully you'll be able to hear and come in all the Sounds way. great. Thank you. here 
And so you can tell it's not cylindrical, which means it's in the flute family called ocarina. Of course, in Austria, like when I went over, they had ocarina bands, and she I wonder where they got those things from. <laughs> <laughs> between an ocarina and a flute is that we have mouthpiece, air window, see them right there? Mm -hmm. There's two things already in common. Finger holes, finger holes, exit hole, no exit hole. So there's the di difference right there. The other difference is cylindrical versus spherical. And that's how, when you close it up, you get that funny closed in or owl sound. These instruments were often associated with the uh, afterlife because owls were symbols of um, not just like death, like violent death, but the other side of the, of the, of the coin, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that's why I played them. It's, it's not just only one explanation. Okay, so you can use these for meditation, for relaxing, for lullabies. I got to talk about one thing though. It just occurred to my mind. Um, a lot of people ask me, Martina, are your, all your instruments sacred? The instruments are multifunctional, right? They right. play everything. And we're, our instruments are like that. But if we're parties, and it becomes beautiful, that's beautiful. I love the deep, rich sound that produces. Yeah, it's incredible. Now, the little ones are cute. A little fatty. That one was made in Mexico. Oh, by the way, my, my friend, his name is Martin, too. Um, you can buy these in Mexico for like five. I got this for five bucks. But it's worth a lot more. So they're quite you know, calm. What I gotta do to make that? So they're quite calm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is the little one. This is the one I made. people very pleasing. 
over the years I've become accustomed to it because you remember I grew up here so I grew up here in, in a western um, harmony where all the tones are even on pianos and guitar and I'm a guitar player from the beginning so I grew up playing Jimi Hendrix and blues and slide guitar and dobro and all that stuff slightly off, wow. put them together, and you get these multiphonic things. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and neuroscience has some wonderful comments about these. These instruments can put you in high states of alertness um, and awareness. In other words, they wake you up. Is that the same as a drone flute, that one part of it can produce one sound while the other one is, has well, finger holes? When you, have multi, when you have multiphonic instruments, you can do that. So I can close the holes off here, and over here do a, this will be the, this guy will be the drone, and this will be the melody. So, but they're tuned in such a way that it doesn't function in our Western ears if it did this one. I'll close off all the holes and use the lowest fundamental tone. That's the bottom note of the, of the flute, or the fundamental tone. And then over here, use this as the chanter, like a, a bagpipe. This is Native American. The panpipe from Bolivia and Peru is Native American, right? The ocarinas from Mexico and all the way down to Peru and Bolivia are Native American. These are Native American instruments. So you can tell when they get those North American, um, way up north. Um, actually, by the way, that North American, uh, the one we call Native American flute, that thing, the earliest ones that I understand came from the area of uh, just south near New York, Seneca. The mouthpiece is found in ancient Mexican flutes like 500 years before. Interesting. Yeah, so upstate yeah. New York, Seneca, they were finding... Yeah, that's what, that's what, I, wow. that's what I heard. I haven't researched those instruments fully. But, um, yeah, from that part of North America, and from that, on my part of North America, we have these complex instruments that are were made because they had more time. They were there in metropolises doing particularly, you know, not just scavenging, not, not, not nomading, not hunting. They were artists that stayed in one spot making things. That's why they came up with these weird multiphonic things and oh my god you cannot believe the clay instruments that clay is a uh, incredible uh instruments that sound like wind uh people crying but with a flute sound to it uh, uh, some bizarre stuff um a little while ago i played a ball that has a hole and then there's a tube that goes over it that's all it is there's a ball in here with a hole there's a tube the air exits Somehow it makes this sound. Oh, this has been wow. the news of the death whistle, which is a friend of mine started that, and that's not true. It's like you can use these, there, there's some of these that sound like somebody screaming or something scary. There are other ones that sound just like wind. And I've used these in meditations and in healings, and no one's ever opened their eyes and go, hey, that's a death whistle, you know? Because if you play it, it, it's the same thing as the guitar analogy, right? If I go, you're not gonna do that in meditation. Oh, I feel so relaxed. You could play a guitar anywhere. You could play this anywhere. So when I do a healing or a meditation, I'll be doing... Real mental relaxes people. It's how you use the instrument. Yeah, your music ranges from music that I love to use when I teach um, yoga or meditation to stuff that makes you want to get up and you have to dance. It's so... Um, playful and upbeat and uplifting and tribal. So that's why I love your yeah. range of work. You have to know how to use the instruments. What? What do you? What? That's what the 
Going back to the neuroscience thing again, that really helped me out. Let me let me play this a little bit. This oh. is another one I made. I've been making a lot of stuff and having some fun. A little, I don't know, salamander. Um, it's a white clay covered in a gray slip clay. Uh, and those of you who know ceramics know what yep. I'm talking about. You get the same colored clay, and then but add some dark to it, and then you paint the whole thing over, fire it, and I came back and etched it out with a, a sharp object. creative aspects of the visuals. Beautiful. Yeah. I came out of the, the, the kiln the other day, and uh, I tried to make a uh, ashalot, uh, what do they call them in English, a uh, water dog, mud puppy. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm not familiar with them, but I've heard of them. In, in, in the, when I was a kid, uh, in the old days, um, they used to sell some of these in stores, and they had longer fins, longer tails, and they turned into the tiger salamander later on. So from Mexico. So I've been having fun making my instruments and I'm going to be making a lot more because there's some things, specific things that I want that the construction is just like a huge pain. Um, I love this guy and I've got to show him to you because everybody gets excited. He is only about that big. See how small he is? Oh my gosh. So I stuck a tail on him, then I stuck wings, then I stuck a head and a little beak. Oh, so now beautiful. We have little... And when I fired him, here's the color it comes out, right? That's a um, mocha. It looks like dark chocolate brown when it's wet, but when you fire it, it's very light beige flesh tone. So what I did, another part of my going and living and using this thing is I make my own paint. I don't use acrylic anymore. So I, there's three things you need when you make a paint. Water to transfer it. Pigment so that you could, um, you know, have different color. And where, wherever you get your pigment from is up to you. The last one's the binder that makes it sticky. In Mexico, the binder was cactus juice and gal or calcium hydrochloride or chlorate or something. Mix it together, that stuff don't come off. That's why I, I paint them with. White is chalk, yellow is red, yellow ochre, red is red ochre. And that's what I did with my drums here, see? Oh, I burned them. Yeah, I, I engraved them, I burned them, and then I paint them with the natural paint. Is that bamboo, Martin? Is that bamboo? Huh? Is that bamboo? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. And then, those are my gifts that I have. And uh, where's the other one? Oh, see the other flutes. These are the ones I made. But no, nobody paints them. But uh, where I got that idea from is I got it from my ancestors. It's there. There's painted ones in, in the lot in the museums in Mexico. But all the guys that I know, I kind of feel kind of cool about this. All the guys that I know that make them, they, uh, you know, this is a glaze. I like this glaze because it looks ancient. It's called iron ore, so I do like that. And there's iron ore again. It looks like an artifact, man. But I like getting the iron ore and painting on it. You know, I say, why not? Check this little guy out. I gotta get away from the mic. But there you go. Oh, that's fantastic. Little cutie. Oh. I'm going to be making a whole bunch more because that. A bunch of my friends went nuts when they saw them. I made this about a year ago when I started, but I kind of gave up on clay because I got started working. So I started painting it. And then I made this uh, in August, and I didn't know that this would happen. Oh,
is something. So the next project is I'm going to put boom, put them together and make a, a double. Yeah, I'm just letting you know, Martin, we have two minutes left. Our time just flew right by. That's so easy. It's so easy. And i got to show you one more thing. This is the gourd rain stick that I made a while back. It's a huge gourd. And I put special goodies inside to make it sound uh, real. It sounds like, I don't know if the audio is like this. It's it very good. Like it does sound like water. Very clear. And that's different sizes of material and density. Like I put pieces of wood and shell, tiny rocks and bigger rocks. And these are all Mayan water symbols that I painted on. I guess from working gourds and bamboo since the 90s, because I made over 70,000 instruments in schools and workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there have been bamboo and Repeat gourds. that, 70,000. 50,000, probably more. That's amazing. And I want to let our viewers know, before I let you go, that you and I are going to do some collaborative things. We're throwing yeah. some ideas around about um, co-facilitating some retreats somewhere in Central America, maybe Belize, maybe Costa Rica, who knows. But you promise you'll come back and share your gifts with our viewers again? Yeah, we didn't even get a chance to finish talking about the meditational uses and the spiritual uses and the neuroscience. Uh, there's a lot of deep stuff. We'll um, have to have you back. Yeah, yes, and I thank you very much for... Uh, it's an honor to be with you and all of you out there, and uh, may you find your path. And, you know, like we say in Yaki, uh, happily will you arrive when you find your path, no? Oh, you go, thank nice. You. Thanks. Thanks so much for, for sharing yourself with us once again, Martin. We'll definitely have some future time together. And thank you for joining us on The Sacred Journey. We'll catch you next time. Yeah.